Hello, today is July 12th, I think? Yes, and it's Friday. And we're here with nonsense and a bunch of other garbage for you to enjoy on your Friday. And social, a lot of social. Social, there was another category in this section, right? Robots and AI? Look, I didn't even take the keyboard off the table. Yeah, we're what, what we're a you? mess this week. Usually Ryan <laughs> handles the keyboard and stuff, so. We're so tired, so we're exhausted. We're so tired all the time. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, first story. YouTube is banning stuff. Oh, there you go. Yeah, YouTube's mystery. Well, go ahead. YouTube mystery ban on hacking videos as content creators puzzled. So, what's more puzzling is like, why did they pick a picture of a penguin? Did anybody notify YouTube that Google literally sponsors capture the flag type events? This just reeks of some executive that just doesn't understand information security having some kind of a reactionary response to it. It's like, it does no, feel very reactionary. Like, oh, we can't have people hacking. Hacking's bad. Like, yeah. quick, remove it. Yeah. and But Google literally hosts a capture the flag type event where two teams compete to hack a thing to... Google's, Google's gotten so big that, like, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. I think that um, this is a really scary situation that we're in where like selling bathwater like gamer bathwater is okay like that's a perfectly reasonable activity and it's like I would like to learn more about um, you know how my router might be compromised is a less desirable activity like that's a very listen no one's paying for that well I mean do you think the end game for YouTube is to eventually become like Spotify where the only people allowed on the platform have been very carefully whitelisted by some external entity. I bet that that, but maybe like, I don't know, they might get a lot of backlash for that, but I could see that happening eventually. Just because it's like, that would make it easier for them to monetize and they wouldn't have such high hosting costs because they would only have like, you know, it's, approved creators instead of like everybody and their mom uploading videos. It's really not any worse than it already has been. Like, I think that they should just abandon the platform wholesale, come up with a new name for something and then let the really good content creators move over to the new thing with all the the Byzantine rules and just call that something else like tube you yeah I don't know something else and then just let all of the unwashed masses remain on the YouTube side of things but you know slowly poison the well by making the infrastructure terrible do you think uh, do you think we would be invited over to the new the new empire no we're going to float plane probably we won't be invited we're terrible we're lucky that we're, it's like you're, we'll, we'll monetize one out of every four of your videos, nah, even though we're just it's just tech news. That's all it is. They just they hear words that are possibly bad or <laughs> phrases that could be bad, so they might they just have to be safe. One. Like, oh no, the Venture Beat website's not allowed. Facebook is downgrading posts that promote miracle cures. Well, I guess that's not any worse than YouTube downgrading posts that promote capture the flag activities. I mean, this one. I don't, it is one of those things, though, like, how do they tell and, like... But I guess if it's, like, if it's filled with emojis... <laughs> <laughs> can you believe how much weight I've lost? Emoji, <laughs> emoji, emoji. It's just these berries, man. These Order berries. Order more now. Clap, clap, clap. I wonder, oh, sorry. If, I wonder if it would uh, treat, I'm like, right you know, the thing where you get your stomach stapled? And, like, this is miracle cure. Help me lose a bunch of weight. And it's like, no, you're, you're the gastric bypass surgery, that's a miracle cure. Yeah, no, no, no. Because, like, I don't know. You're never on Facebook. But, like, I am. And I know lots of people who get sucked into those, like, multi-level marketing schemes. And it's always, like, y usually it's a stay-at-home mom who doesn't have a whole lot going on. But she's trying to earn a little extra money for her family. And then she's like, here's this weight loss supplement. Or here's these leggings that are like massively overpriced. And like everyone is selling them all at once. And like, <laughs> you know, they'll cure everything. And your kid won't have allergies anymore. And like, you'll get to go shopping three times a week because of all the money you're earning. And You know what's a non-concern for Facebook? Security. Facebook has abused its uh, ad system to spread remote access Trojans since 2014. Wendell, you said you had a lot of experience with this. I don't think I've known anyone who's gotten any yeah. issue from Facebook. A lot of family uh, will like click the ad or see a Facebook ad or it's just flash ads and they're definitely getting viruses from... You didn't install Adblock on their machines for them? Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's estimated that tens of thousands of users have become victims of the campaign. You can install Adblock, but they're like, I need my... 
Really? My family like was blown away. <laughs> when I when I like turned on ad block and they're like, wait, I can watch YouTube and I don't have to watch an ad. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can look all the stuff's gone off the sidebar on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, this is what the internet should be. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, turn it off for our videos, please. But <laughs> well, we understand if you don't, though, it is kind of annoying. Yeah, the uh, the all the images on Facebook got turned off involuntarily with the Cloudflare outage. And we talked about that last video, but that also revealed some really other interesting stuff. Um, Facebook's image outage reveals how the company's AI tags your photos. I think this is actually kind of cool. So it'll if you have like a picture, say I went on a hiking trip recently, and and someone had posted a bunch of pictures of like trees and flowers. It says photo may contain trees, flowers, <laughs> creek. Your photo may contain Russell Bramden. So apparently. Facebook knows what that guy looks like, which is going to feed the... Oh, yeah, uh, they absolutely do. ...the, the uh, surveillance recognition engine. I mean, that part's not cool, but, like, the fact that you have alt tags that are customized and, like, you know, it's better for accessibility, <laughs> that's cool. But uh, the fact that they're probably tracking everything about you may be less cool. TikTok. It's an app. That we're too old to use. Probably. I don't, I don't use TikTok. TikTok. It's, it's under investigation over child data use. We've literally gotten to the point where like YouTube videos used to be kind of long, and then they were like 10 minutes, and now they're like 5 minutes. And TikTok is literally like this is seconds. This is basically Vine 2.0, from yeah. what I understand. Yeah. Because like it used to be funny Vines that would get posted to YouTube, and now it's funny TikToks that are posted to YouTube. And, uh, oh, sorry. TikTok under investigation over child data use. So children use TikTok. And they're surprising not, no one yeah yeah and so uh, there's a UK they're not supposed to be looking at whether the video sharing app breaches data protection law hint it does because children are not supposed to use it but they use it anyway but I don't I don't know can you really blame the app for that shouldn't your parents be in theory like listen any age verifying that anything any uh, European Union member state can use to find Google no or, they're gonna or use find it somebody. Not necessarily Google, just these large companies. Are, oh, there's some success happening over here. We need to find them. It's probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. And then it'll shut down like Vine did because Vine was too expensive to run. Yeah. Facebook did have a scare this week. Uh, Facebook campus given the all clear after Saren scare. So I guess that's the thing that happens. It was a false positive. There was a package that tested positive for Saren, but it was not legit. If you're wondering what Saren is, there's a facility not terribly far from where <laughs> we are that has Saren gas in it. Read that Wikipedia late, late at night and kind of feel good about how scary that is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nerve gas. Yeah. And it will violently kill you quickly. It's very quickly. bad. Uh, there were also some protests in, in Hong Kong not long ago. A lot of people involved. But how many people were protesting? Well, uh, it turns out AI helped improve the crowd counting in the, those Hong Kong protests. So AI was used to analyze the pictures to try to figure out how many people are actually protesting and that was a lot easier than human counters, like counting the number of people in the picture. Yeah, I can imagine. Neat. We would have shown you that article, but New York Times didn't allow it. No. TechCrunch has our next article, which is uh, pretty cool. It says that uh, image recognition and many apps and QR codes, how China uses its tech to sort its waste. And I, was, I read this and I was like, I kind of want this here. Yeah, I wish we did more recycling programs here. I don't think they're as common in this area. Um, what was, what, we were, what was the example we were talking about before we started? Well, I, when I went to Canada, I was sort of confused by the recycling, like the way that the recycling was labeled, because it seems like there's like compostable and non-compostable. And so you could compost your food waste, and if like you had a paper plate that you had cleaned thoroughly, it's like that would go in the one pile, but if your paper plate had food waste on it, that would go in the other pile, plate and all. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really understand... In, in America, we have glass recycling, certain paper. types of pla uh, uh, plastic recycling, and paper recycling. So it's like, and then just regular trash. And, and compost is, if you want to compost, that's cool, but that's on you. Yeah. That's, that's actually very common in the tiny house movement. A lot of them <laughs> compost. So everybody has like a compost. It depends on what neighborhood you're in, but... Uh, a compost heap. Yeah. That's that would... <laughs> I don't know how common that is. In other parts of the U.S., but I've seen that here. In the U.K., it's like, oh, my back garden has a terrible smell. They probably don't have enough space. Well, I don't know. I guess you could. It would just smell bad. But if you keep it covered, it's not terrible. But anyway. In China, 
it's with an app. And so it's like if you pick up dog poop with newspaper, is that still paper or is that organic waste? And it turns out that's that's organic waste. That's not yeah. paper anymore. I mean, there's paper there, but the paper will break down. So it's a different recycling thing once you've combined the products and you don't want to, you know, discombine. That's just a... Ugh. You know what I don't... You, know, you mentioned newspaper. I use bags to pick up ruse, like plastic bags. And I was like, that seems extra wasteful because eventually the dog poop will go away. But, like, you're using plastic that will stay on the earth for thousands of years to pick it up, and it's like, oh, is that... Is this, does wax paper break down? Because maybe little wax paper bags would be better, because you can still I, invert those. I buy, um... They're supposed to be more eco-friendly, but whether that actually is true or not, I don't know. The bag's green. <laughs> supposed to be, break down a little quicker. Probably, like, you know, 1,000 years less over 5,000 years or something, like... You know what? AI might have done something useful for a change. This is kind of neat. AI invents more effective flu vaccine in world first. Adelaide, blah, blah, blah. researchers say. So, uh... Wendell scrolled down. I scrolled down a little bit. But I, I, we learned a new word. We did. I immediately forgot it. I have to look at it again. Edgevent. Edgevent. It's I don't something... know if that's how you pronounce it. But that's, that's the active ingredient. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's something that aids... I think it, the actual root means like to aid, but it's it aids your immuno response. Yes. And so the AI was like, "Hey, based on the data you've given me, you should look at this compound." And the researchers did, and that worked. So this is starting a trial in the U.S. because flu season came early this year. Somehow, even though it's like 100 gazillion degrees here. Wow, that's just what they said in the article. I don't believe them. Yeah, I don't. I haven't told anyone who's had the flu yet. What so. Sam's really doing is accelerating the flu season, so it's a constant dependence on. On flu vaccines for people who do <laughs> caregiving. I'm only mostly kidding. Do you do the flu vaccine? I do. I don't do a flu vaccine, typically. I probably should because I work with kids periodically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do it frequently, like maybe like once or twice a month. You're patient zero for the office. No, I haven't been sick for a while. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, well, you know. All right. Oh, this one's neat. These gloves turn sign language into audible speech. Look at the—they look kind of jank. Like you would get electrocuted. But they do. It's, it's probably okay. It looks I like mean, some. No, no offense, Wendell, but like this looks like something you would design, where it's like <laughs> there's just wires and stuff sticking out of it, but it works perfectly. I think it looks amazing. You totally won't get electrocuted from those five but AAA batteries. Scroll back up batteries. here. Look at the uh, the subtitle on this. We were both read this one. Oh. Seventy-two percent of families don't sign with their deaf children. That's if, sad. If you have a deaf child, you should learn sign language. That's or, part of your responsibilities as of being a parent. I I could see maybe if your child went deaf when they were older, maybe you could write to them or like text them. I don't know, but that like that might be acceptable. But having a know, child who was like deaf from birth, yeah, that would that would be really off putting. Yeah, it's like you know you're you're signing with like your teacher. It's like a parent teacher conference, and your, your mom's just on her phone, like <laughs> like let me type you a message. Yeah. I don't know, but this actually makes it so it's audible, which is neat. A lot of AI news this week, too. Uh, artificial intelligence is being used to help identify bat species that are suspected for carrying the Nipah virus in Kerala. So I should is, have looked up the Nipah virus. I've actually never heard of that. Like, you capture bats, and it's like, oh, this bat is infected. And then and then that's like a thing. Are you going to look it up now? Let's, yeah, let's read about the Nipah virus, because I didn't get a chance to read about that. Usually, if I find some little aside, I try to do that before, but... Well, we need to close the loop here where, like, once we get the, the algorithm down pat, that's when we deploy the drone army to actually um, take out and destroy the, the bats. bats that are infected. Transmitted through contaminated food or directly between people. In infected people, it causes a range of illnesses to asymptomatic infection to acute respiratory illness and fatal encephalitis. That sounds uh, pretty serious. Which is probably why they're exterminating those bats. Probably worthy of developing a drone that does all those things. So, did you know that plants are not conscious? I did. <laughs> I hope so because I've been growing tomatoes and jalapenos all summer. Apparently, a lot of people don't know that plants are not conscious. So, The Guardian has this story about a group of biologists trying to bury the idea that plants are conscious the editor who had to do the title for this was like that's so clever burying the <laughs> burying the idea it was like oh bothered by claims that plants have brain-like command centers and their root tips that possess the equivalent of an animal nervous system system the critics counter there is no proof of sentient vegetation or structures within plants that would grant them uh what the neuroscientist uh, has called the feeling of what happens 
how terrifying would that be if you were a vegetarian, like for ethical reasons? <laughs> and then it was like, I can't eat plants either. What yeah. do you What do you eat? That's a problem. You don't eat anything. Eggs. No, because if you well, I don't know. Well, if the vegans don't eat anything that's that's animal produced. Vegetarians just don't eat meat. What about like free range chickens? Because we had chickens growing up and. They seemed perfectly happy. Like it was a it was a quid pro quo. It's like, look, you've got a nice place to to camp out and lots of food, and we take the eggs that are unfertilized. And like, you're not forced to do anything. You can do whatever you want. If you want to leave, you know, you could. Just pop. there's. Oh. oh no! You hit the mic. Oh, that's terrible. We I'm had so chickens sorry. growing up as well, though their life was probably not quite as lovely as what yours was because we lived in like downtown Tacoma (laughs) I'm pretty sure that some of them did actually take off now I'm not sure that their life outside the farm was any better but you know we did occasionally eat them ours uh we didn't ever eat ours though the the neighborhood dogs got hold of them a couple times which was traumatic for me as a five-year-old because my favorite one got mangled Mm. and I saw it a little bit of a problem yeah speaking of things that are a little bit of a problem (laughs) <laughs> Air Force accidentally dropped three dummy bombs on Florida. They ask the public not to touch if you find them. <laughs> and uh, I think we segued into the nonsense section. So they, they show a picture <laughs> of it, and it, I don't know how you could ever mistake it. Like, if you did find that, I mean, it looks like a bomb. But apparently this has happened before in Oklahoma in 2014. Well, these are dummy bombs. And so they contain, quote-unquote, a small pyrotechnic charge but no explosives. Yeah, and like, it's totally fine, but don't touch it if you see it. And please immediately alert us if you find it. <laughs> but it's fine. Don't worry about it. Next week's headline is going to be, Florida my, a man finds... Uh, finds blue- bomb, yeah. <laughs> Loads up on car in Disneyland. Oh, no. Or Disney World. Uh, no, it's not good. A third CRISPR baby may have already been born in China. Uh, did I? So I didn't get to read all of this one. What was this baby's superpower? Oh, read full article. Yeah, we don't. We there was there. Was, yeah, it was. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they gave us somewhere for yeah, that much. The Chinese scientist sprang a further surprise on the shocked gene editing experts. The second Chinese woman, he said, was pregnant with yet another CRISPR baby, and early pregnancy tests had confirmed it. So Some yeah, months have passed. Due to be born at any moment. Normal so. birth. That's just. The genetic enhancements of CRISPR fried. See, I'm, I'm waiting. We're turning into Gattaca. Every time we do a story about CRISPR, I have to mention the movie Gattaca. It's gonna be scary. People scary who are too. born normally are gonna be considered freaks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we're that's that's basically where we're headed. People like us with bad eyesight, they're not gonna exist in the future. No. Speaking of, this was nonsense. Ryan added this one, but it's like, is this really nonsense? This was sad. I was like, why would you post this one? What does this have to do with technology? Ryan's not here this week, but... In early morning roundups, Denver grabs geese in city parks to kill them and send meat to hungry families. They declined to clarify where the meat was going, but there are too many geese. And they, they, they describe a really horrific situation where, like, the, the banks of this lake are just covered in duck poop. And it's just a bad situation. And so they're There's gonna, some lakes around here like that. They're going to kill all the ducks, but they're going to turn it into food. So I guess, you know, every dark cloud has a silver lining. That's, uh, well, geese are mean as hell, too. But Geese, yeah. I guess not, Yeah, not geese, are, geese are real mean. But it is kind of sad. Geese poop. Do you think they'll remember this? Like, will they exact their revenge later? No, I think that, that it's not even all the geese. It's just a small fraction of the geese, but they've been doing it every morning for a while, and there's still too many. There's still, there's like a little baby goose in a nest somewhere, and he sees his mother get rounded up, and he yeah. vows revenge. I'd watch that movie. They, I'd watch that Disney film. They've eaten everything. So, New York Times has a cool article. If we could read it, scientists took an MRI scan of an atom. Just a single atom. We've gotten to the point in the MRI technology where we can image a single atom. And the images are pretty cool on the New York Times. Maybe it's worth subscribing. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> and that's it. To the next story. <laughs> pretty much. I saw this one. I knew Ryan added it. We're anti-influencer. Ice cream truck make Instagram makes Instagram stars pay double. So this is really amazing. Uh, so yeah, I love this. If you tell the ice cream truck that you're an influencer, they charge you double. Usually, you know, you do that because you're trying to get something for free. This is how it should be. Like, I love this because as someone in the arts, people are always trying to get you to do stuff for free. Oh, but you get exposure. And like, 
this is just poetic justice <laughs> for that all those moments there's so many people that have a huge following and it's just absolutely completely worthless because yeah. there's just no purchasing power there's no there's no community support by the way we love our fans thanks thanks for <laughs> <laughs> thanks for supporting us on our store and on patreon and on our forum but uh yeah we don't expect free ice cream yeah, no. We pay for our own ice cream here at Level 1 Tex. We really do. And it's thanks to patrons like you that we can afford to do that. Also so, our day jobs, but... Well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this is... Uh, I don't remember this. Oh, wait, I do know this one. Never yeah, mind. Yeah. I can't see the headline because it's so, so far away. Schools are using aggressive... Aggression. Ag- aggression detecting mics that are set off by coughing, slamming locker doors... To head off the next school shooting. So imagine having a school monitored by microphones and bad software, where it's like a student coughing in a room is alerting somebody in a room. It's a somewhere. DEFCON Five situation. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like you need to get in there now, and it's like oh, it's just student. School coughing. goes on lockdown because yeah. someone has a cold. It's like, oh, somebody slammed their locker. Oh, that's bad. Is it? It's going to turn schools into a, like a mausoleum where everything has to be like super quiet and everybody has to be like super hushed. That's probably going to not be good for the mental health of the children, I would guess. Well, it's going to be distressing, too, because, like, if you haven't witnessed a knife fight in the cafeteria, did you really go to school in Eastern Kentucky? (laughs) They punched each other out. I just didn't know what was happening. I saw a lot of fights in high school. (laughs) That's probably, like, maybe a case for it, but I don't think that the technology's there yet. Scientists are searching for a mirror universe. You could be sitting right in front of it. I don't think that's true. I This seems... You know, there's some weird stuff in physics that I don't understand, but this seems kind of made up. There was an experiment that they did where... Um, Ex- explain it for me. There, were, there was an experiment that they did where uh, they generated a certain amount of neutrinos, and... Uh, that is basically universal and then they did the experiment a different way and basically put the neutrinos in a jar but there were less neutrinos than expected that actually made it to the jar and the the explanation that they came up with which is more elegant from a mathematical standpoint is basically that they went into a mirror dimension if they weren't lost they just went somewhere else a parallel dimension so they're going to do another experiment to try to recreate the situation to determine if they can actually send those particles into a mirror d- dimension. Because neutrinos decay uh, predictably, and they didn't see the decay rate that they expected in one scenario versus another, which doesn't make any sense. And the simplest way to explain it was that the neutrinos go to another dimension. Sometimes the simplest explanation is not the correct one, but we'll see. It's hilarious that the simplest explanation is that there's a mere dimension. Because for me, that sounds like the craziest explanation. (laughs) Oh, Japan. Japan has got... uh, This is a cute story. Not a lot of unemployment. A lot of, like, if you want to uh, have a job, move to Japan. So Uber is uh, recruiting grannies as a result of that. Uber recruits grannies as couriers to deliver ramen in Japan. This is so stinking cute. So apparently, I, I didn't learn this from the article. You can't do ride sharing. No. But Uber Eats is a thing there. Yeah. So you can have people deliver food randomly, which I guess is a thing, which is fine. That'd be like a, a cool job. It's you like, know, if you're if you're old and like you're still able to get around. Like, a little old lady brings you stuff. I would I could get behind a little old lady bringing me like southern, like really well prepared southern food. Like various yeah. forms of pork and biscuits and gravy and like biscuits and gravy fried chicken various forms of pork oh yes macaroni and cheese the southern style mac Mm -hmm. and cheese wow it's all these products have pork products in them because like the the best mac and cheese has like all of the pork parts that you have left over not really bacon but no no no, we didn't do that growing up it's it's really good it's really good stuff i could definitely it's like giant buttermilk biscuits yeah no, I, the biscuit and gravy, I could go. I mean, biscuit and gravy is not really that hard to make, but I'm so lazy. People in the UK are really confused about what I'm talking about when I say Cookies biscuits. and gravy. <laughs> yeah, so cookies mm. and gravy. Uh, and the gravy, like, you guys don't even know what gravy is. Like, yeah. gravy is different than your gravy. You're thinking of, like, a girl. I don't know. I feel very sad for 
people in London, like the culinary thing. It's it's better now, but like 50 years ago, it was pretty terrible from what I understand. There's a lot of jokes about British food. I mean, <laughs> fish and chips is fine. I, I haven't really tried enough British food. I know there's oh, a lot of vinegar and pickled stuff, but... It's, oh, it's bangers and mash. No. Mm. No. no. Actually, um, I think a lot of Middle Eastern food is popular in London, but they really need to get on the, uh, the uh, Tex-Mex... And like yeah. various forms of like chicken and cheese. I bet we could open up a taco stand in London and make a mint. The so a lot of our British viewers have said that they don't have a lot of access to like Mexican restaurants, and I'm like, that's really sad because in the U.S. they're everywhere and they're delicious. <laughs> you know what else is really sad? This is the end of this episode of the Level One News. Dab on them. It was a bad dab. Oh, okay. We'll see you next week. Be sure to check out our coverage, of all the tech stuff that was on day one, because that was exciting. And thank you again to. The folks that support us. Yes, thank you. We'll see thank you, next you all. Week. Bye.